Welcome to part 6 of the ICO HF52 tube amplifier series. In parts 1 through 5, I repainted, rebuilt, and demonstrated the 1957 amp. And in this episode, I'll polish and install the brass faceplate and tube shields, add decals, discover a problem, fix a problem, and explain how ultralinear feedback works. Stay tuned to the end too when you'll get a chance to hear the amp for yourself. And no, this time I'm not going to just record the amp playing through a speaker. Let's start with the faceplate. Here it is looking pretty shabby. I usually have good luck polishing brass with Simichrome, so let's give it a try. The Semichrome is shining things up nicely, but it isn't making a dent in these paint spots. A little solvent should do the trick though. Looks good. Let's install the faceplate and knobs now. Wow, gorgeous. Our amp came from the factory with silkscreen labels similar to this HF20 amp, and when I bought it, the labels were replaced with these Sharpie scribbles. Now that I've repainted the chassis, the back panel looks good, but without consulting the manual, we have no idea what all those jacks and terminals are for. Let's see if we can fix that now using something better than a Sharpie. First, I'll use my P-Touch label maker to print the bottom row of text. Looks good. Let's carefully apply it to the amp. I made another shorter label for the top row. Just remove the backing paper. All right, I can live with that. Now let's polish up those tube shields. This one came out great, but this one has lost some of its plating. Still more than good enough. Now I had mentioned at the end of the last video that the amp sounded good, but I was getting a bit of hum. Here's what it sounds like with a microphone right up to the speaker. I noticed though that if I adjusted the bias balance control for about a half volt offset, I could greatly reduce the hum, so I decided to bench test the amp adjusted this way. As I should have expected with a half volt bias imbalance, the amp barely produced any power. I rebiased it correctly, but found I still could only get about half the power that I expected from the amp. On top of that, I saw on the oscilloscope that the positive side of the sign became completely unstable at clipping. Clearly, I had more issues with the amp than just a little hum. I spent many frustrating hours trying to hammer out the problem until I finally discovered that one side of the output transformer primary was wired incorrectly. The yellow and red wires were swapped. I made the mistake not only because the old cloth wires have lost their color, but also because I relied on the previous builder's work to identify the transformer wiring. Knowing how poorly this amp was originally assembled, that was pretty foolish. I really should have spent more time with an ohm meter figuring the wiring scheme out for myself. Having the red and yellow wires swapped created two problems. First, the B plus was connected to the center tap instead of the winding input, and that accounted for the low power output. Second, the tube grid was connected to the outside of the winding instead of the center tap. A real problem as this grid helps reduce distortion using negative feedback from the output transformer. It was getting feedback for sure, but from the wrong place. Since we're on the subject, let's talk a little more about negative feedback and the amp's ultralinear design. Negative feedback reduces distortion because the feedback signal is out of phase with the input signal. This has the effect of greatly canceling nonlinear signals created by the tube. Nonlinear simply means a signal on the output that's not proportional to the input, and tubes are naturally nonlinear. If feedback to an output tube is provided by the plate, the voltage to current ratio curves upward, and when it's provided by the B, it curves downward. Neither, of course, is a linear response. Ultra linear amps like our ICO H52, however, seek to find an average between the two types of curves by instead providing feedback from a midpoint tap on the transformer winding. Well, actually not quite the midpoint, but at about a 60 to 40% split. In fact, this split is how I discovered that the transformer was wired incorrectly. When I checked resistances, the numbers didn't add up. Ultralinear circuits really do work quite well, but only of course if they're wired correctly. So let's fix the wiring mix up and test the amp to see if it meets ICO specifications. Okay, we've got about 53 and a half watts of power at 1% distortion. Great result as ICO only specifies 50 watts. Now let's test frequency response. 
Look at that, almost perfectly flat over the entire audio band. Fantastic. Let's now test the hum level, which should be about 75 dBs at full power. Looks like we're coming in right about there or better, so we've solved the noise issue. And finally, for fun, let's do a THD versus frequency test to see which parts of the audio band have the best and worst harmonic distortion. Okay, so at 50 watts, THD reaches a maximum of 0.8% at 20 Hz, dips to below 0.1% at 1 kHz, and climbs a little bit to about 0.18% at 20 kHz. I do like this test because it shows that our 1% distortion result really doesn't show the whole picture. Yeah, it's that high at 20 Hz, but over most of the audio band, distortion is actually quite a bit lower. Now, in this video, I went through the test quickly, but if you'd like to see more in-depth bench testing with details on what all this really means and how the equipment is set up, please see my other videos, Dynaco SCA80Q Part 9, Macintosh MC2105 Part 8, and Kenwood KA76, 100 watts? Yeah, right. I'll leave some links in the description. Well, I hope you agree that the amp came out looking great, but now I want you to hear just how great it sounds as well. In the following sequence, you'll hear the sound of the amp recorded directly from its speaker outputs. This was done using a voltage divider to reduce the output to a suitable level for recording. Every 10 seconds, the sequence will switch from a recording of the amp's input to a recording of the amp's output. This will allow you to hear the differences imparted to the sound by the amp. Now, of course, as you're listening through YouTube, the sound quality will be somewhat limited by compression. Still, I find YouTube's sound quality is more than good enough for a comparison such as this. So please let me know how you think the amp sounds in the comments. Here we go. Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.